How is moksha defined in Vedanta? Is it freedom from sorrow? Is it freedom from birth and death? Mm. Both. So the way moksha is defined, moksha means freedom, spiritual liberation. Different words are used in um, Indian philosophy. Moksha is one, mukti is another, nirvana is another, uh, kaivalya is another, apavarga, an ancient word, is another. So many words are used to denote this ultimate spiritual freedom. Now what is this? Is it freedom from the cycle of birth and death or is it freedom from sorrow? The answer is both. Both. The way it is taught in Indian classical Indian philosophy, not just Vedanta, in Advaita Vedanta or in other schools of Vedanta or in Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Sankhya, Yoga, um, uh, Purva, Mimamsa, in, um, in Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, in all of them, Moksha is the goal. Uh, one way would be freedom from the cycle of birth and death. So we are trapped in this individual personalities and we go from body to body, lifetime to lifetime, evolving spirituality. The whole goal is to attain spiritual realization and freedom, but we are going through these, um, these little selves from lifetime to lifetime. And when we attain our goal, there is no more need to be encased in these cages of flesh and blood from lifetime to lifetime. So freedom is attained. Uh, so that is how it is put in. There is a paradigm of Indian philosophy. All schools of Indian philosophy, they will talk in that language. Freedom from the cycle of birth and death. But there is another language in which they speak. Which is freedom from sorrow. Freedom from unhappiness. Freedom from misery. Freedom from liberation. Uh, freedom from limitation, not liberation. Liberation from limitation. So that's the... And the two are not different. Freedom from the cycle of birth and death is equal to freedom from sorrow. The cycle of birth and death is synonymous with suffering because it is limitation. Upanishads say, Tameva viditva ati mrityu meti Knowing that one goes beyond sorrow, goes beyond death. That's one language. The Buddha says that there is sorrow or suffering, dukkha in life. And there is an escape, there is a freedom from suffering. And there is a cause of suffering, there is a freedom from suffering. And there is a way to the freedom from suffering. The four noble truths of the Buddha. So there is suffering, dukkha. And is this dukkha, is there a cause of this dukkha? Yes, that is desire. Trishna. Can Dukkha be overcome? Yes. That is called Nirvana, freedom from Dukkha. Is there a way to overcome it? Yes. There is the eightfold way, Ashtanga, Marga of the Buddha. So this is the paradigm of spirituality in India. It's not just the Buddha. Yeah. Long before him, Sankhya. Sankhya philosophy says, afflicted by the threefold sorrow, Dukkha Traya Vigatat, Jihasa Tadapaghata Keheto. There is an inquiry. How can we overcome, finally overcome sorrow? Temporarily we can, um, temporarily we can overcome. If you're feeling hungry, eat food, fine. But completely, totally overcome suffering and limitation in life, is it possible? And the answer is yes, it is possible. It is possible. Uh, that is the spiritual quest. That is the spiritual quest. So the two, two, two ways it is put. As you saw in Sankhya philosophy, suffering is there. Is there a way to overcome suffering? And that is the quest for liberation. Or the cycle of birth and death. The cycle of birth and death, freedom from, liberation from the cycle of birth and death, this unending cycle of repetitions of this limited life, that is also moksha. And it's the same thing. Especially here in the West, uh, where uh, it is mostly from the Christian or Abrahamic kind of uh, thinking, where the idea of multiple lives and births and deaths is not, uh, not common, not accepted easily. So one can speak about liberation from, from suffering, uh, freedom from suffering. That everybody can identify with. One might say, I am only sure of this one life. I am born, I know this and I am going to die, I know that much. 
I had many lives after before this. I will have many lives after that, and I have need freedom from this cycle. Is it is it really a problem, or is it an imagined problem, imaginary solution to imaginary problem? Yeah. So in that case, you one need not refer to multiple lives, uh, birth and death. One can just say there is suffering in life. Yes, is freedom from suffering possible? Yes. So moksha is also freedom from suffering both ways one can put it. Yes.